I haven't looked at a copy of Wraith the Oblivion in well over 20 years now. I had both the first and the second editions when they had come out at the time. Never ran it, never played a Wraith character. Mostly just kind of wanted them just for the completionist sake of, you know, understanding how, you know, the that part of the spirit world and how ghosts operate within the greater World of Darkness setting and all that. Uh... Yeah, Wraith is a is a dark game. Uh, had it's quite a couple of controversies about it, uh, not least of which was the whole uh, uh, Holocaust Afterworld book they did under the uh, Black Dogs Game Studio uh, uh, title. I want to say, um, but you know, you'd hear stories of the people who had did try running it, and you know how the the dynamic of how uh, players were both playing their character and someone else's shadow uh, would kind of uh, cause a degree of conflict uh, but in, within player character groups that was greater than that that you would see if uh, you're just having, like, say, two opposing teams of characters, you know, where the players may be working against each other, but uh, not in that same level of, like, direct internal undermining. Uh... On the surface, in terms of the philosophy of Wraith, uh, you would think the, you know, the easy go-to is it's about mortality. Uh, I'm not going there, though. I'm going to say that Wraith is really much more about identity, and insofar as it touches on mortality, there is the notion of the erosion of identity and the things needed to maintain one's identity. Your, your fetters and your passions are, are more what uh, define you and who you are than necessarily your name or the labels you attach yourself. Real identity is just your sense of yourself, that you are who you are. As, uh, in modern times, uh, thanks to you know, uh, social media profiles and, and biographical entries in the backs of books and all that kind of stuff, we, we, we've tried to uh, find condensed little ways to label ourselves to, so we can describe ourselves in shorthand to other people who haven't actually have the time or the opportunity to meet with us and interact with us on, on, on a long enough scale that you can really kind of get a sense of what that person's trajectory is. Uh, and over time, uh, this has caused us to possibly lean too much into these uh, self-appointed, labeled type identities, because those that's not like really what we are. We're not our names. Those are just mouth sounds that we make uh, to get each other's attention. Not too much different than how birds will have a very specific call so they can recognize their hatchlings when they're trying to bring insects back to their nest in the grass and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we are not our occupations. We are we are not our hobbies. Uh, we are uh, of sorts kind of uh, uh, an entity of, of semi-conscious quantum tunneling. Uh, it's carving our own individual uh, paths through a, a somewhat subjective reality. Uh, and it's only by virtue of the fact that there is some sort of thing going on around us that gives us some sort of common ground of agreement uh, that we're able to, like, you know, develop, uh, like, uh, like, a greater flatter, neutralized sense of uh, what existence is, but uh, were we more primitive beings, we would live in a world of nothing but omen. So Wraith, though, you're playing the dead. You're playing ghosts. Uh, part of its dynamic is obviously like, you know, why are you a ghost? What makes some spirits stay on, and why do some move on to a, a, a deeper, further form of afterlife, or just disappear entirely? Uh, Wraith like a lot of other kind of ghost fiction, kind of just leans in the idea that, you know, like these are people who are somewhat strong-willed on some, on some level and or have some sort of, like, deeply unresolved issue that uh, their, their psyche could not let go of upon the moment of passing. And that, that's cause that gives them an anchor, uh, the fetter, as it were, or, or the passion being the thing that's holding them together. Uh, like, you know, these is all just an analogy for, like, the own human psyche, and there's a lot of stuff, particularly about, like, Jungian, uh, Jungian uh, psychology that's built into Wraith, uh, especially with the thing with the whole, uh, that 
the thing that caused uh, Wraith games to uh, famously kind of devolve is uh, you're not only playing your own character when you're playing in Wraith, uh, you're also playing another player's shadow. Uh, on some levels, this kind of subtly feeds into the psychological inherent existential question of Wraith is of the whole, who am I? Am I playing my character or am I playing someone else's character? And because you're playing someone else's shadow, you're 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 directly, you know, like sharing responsibility with the character that somebody else re created, and you're constantly trying to subvert them and cause uh, their their goals to fail. I mean, it, like I said, it creates a dynamic when you're within your player character group. Uh, that while I said on some kind of subtly brilliant level does kind of even get the players themselves on some level to question the who am I in terms of the who am I playing in this game, like which was which character is really the more important? Is it your player character or is it the shadow of someone else's character? I mean, like you know both have their valid place and use after all. Uh, But, you know, you know, if it was just two people playing a hero and a villain just having, like, a fight, that's one thing. But, like, they're not in each other's heads. Uh, as far as I'm aware, Wraith was, like, the very first of the White Wolf World of Darkness games to kind of just quietly, uh, you know, stop being made. They never had that third edition, revised edition of Wraith. It was just the first two. Their last thing, was, I, I think, was the uh, Wraith, the Great War, which was a uh, World War One version of Wraith that I never got a chance to check out. And if I were to... Uh, like look into getting a copy of Wraith again, that's probably the route I would go just so I don't, you know, buy something I used to have. Also, like they, when in doing so, when they removed Wraith from the setting, uh, you know, they, 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 they at least acknowledged it within the setting and there was the whole Tempest thing, you know, Stygia and the Yellow Springs and all that was just kind of like eradicated uh, as part of like, you know, like the ongoing ratcheting up towards whatever the apocalypse Gehenna event and whatever game line that you're running is heading towards. And, uh, you know, would eventually like replace it with Orpheus. And uh, in some ways I kind of feel like Mummy and Demon both kind of touch heavily upon the events uh, that ended Wraith. So I kind of feel like in some ways they are Wraith's more direct inheritors. Uh, I've never seen the more modern uh, version of, uh, like, the, the Geist, the Sin Eaters. I, I, have, I haven't checked that out, so I have no idea what's up with that. Uh, for that matter, there's also, like, that newer ver version of Mummy the Cursed and uh, another demon game that I'm not really sure what their lineage is. Uh, like, I can't tell if they're Chronicles of Darkness or if they're actually fully packaged you know, uh, storyteller games uh, that, that have all the character creation rules and all that already in the book. And uh, how they relate to the old world of darkness or the new world of darkness or none of the above. Uh, anyone who has seen or read any of those books who watches this channel, feel free to leave in the comments to let me, let me know what's up with them. Uh, but, you know, identity, identity. What, like I said, like your identity is not all the things that you're calling yourself. It's just you. There is an episode of Babylon 5, uh, famously, where Delenn is being questioned by the Vorlon to see whether or not she's got what it takes to, you know, uh, lead this next great war against the Shadows. And so uh, they, they bring out of stasis Jack the Ripper, uh, one of the most, like, old-fashioned 1960s Star Trek ripoff kind of bullshit ideas to do in your sci-fi show, but that's all besides the point. As he's, like, interrogating her and torturing her, the question he keeps coming back to is, who are you? Who are you? And... Well, I always kind of felt that they never even really quite got to in that episode, but what even I remember as a kid when watching it, feeling was the obvious answer, uh, is I am. You know, she, you know, it's not, it's not your accomplishments. Uh, all that's in the past and gone. It's not, uh, your forward trajectory has, is really more informative about who you are than your, than your, I guess your, yeah, your your legacy path, uh, the, where you have been, doesn't matter really as much as opposed to where you're going. Uh, we don't view it that way, though. We we are very turned back upon ourselves and constantly fretting over over what's happened, and this leaves us blindsided, just kind of as a species in many ways. 
We're always fighting yesterday's war, so to say. But your identity is a nameless thing. It is just you. You. That's all it has to be. I am. So say, stay waspinated.